All right. So um, thanks again for uh, joining us this afternoon. Um, we've got a couple of great sessions coming up in this segment, um, both of them related to um, Sakai and AI. So the first one is uh, EdTech Evolution, Chat GPT's role in Sakai, and that's going to be presented by Will McClure from the University of Dayton's uh, Center for Online Learning. So I'm going to turn it over to William to um, tell us all about um, Chat GPT. All right. Thank you very much. So as Wilma said, I'm Will. I'm from the University of Dayton. I work on the e-learning team, but I also work as an adjunct faculty member for uh, UDI 055, which is becoming a mindful learner. I've also been a student here, so it's afforded me kind of a three-pronged view of university life. So let me get my presentation up here. All right. So today's talk is going to look at how, in my experience, ChatGPT can supplement and enhance the Sakai experience for instructors, students, and LMS admins. So throughout the talk, I'm going to look at the value of ChatGPT with Sakai, technical overview of ChatGPT, use cases of ChatGPT with Sakai, a live demonstration uh, with some information from a syllabus that I've been kind of tinkering with, best practices for using chat GPT, and then some time for question and answers at the end. So to begin, I want to introduce my silent partner, chat GPT, or maybe not so silent. So I asked chat GPT earlier to introduce itself before I provide an introduction for it. So it said to me, Hello, SkyCon 2023 attendees. I'm chat GPT, a powerful AI language model created by OpenAI. I'm here to assist you with information, answers, questions, and engage in discussions on a wide range of topics. Whether you need help with technology, want to explore new ideas, or simply want to have a conversation, I'm here to assist you. Feel free to ask me anything, and let's make the most out of our time together at SkyCon 2023. So, kind of a little taste of what it can produce um, when you give it a prompt. And we'll pull it in a little more later, but I thought it'd be fun to have it introduce itself. But as it mentioned, ChatGPT is a large language model, an LLM, and a variant of the GPT generative pre-trained transformer model developed by OpenAI. It's designed to generate human-like text-based prompts it receives and is trained on diverse internet texts uh, to pull its information from. ChatGPT can generate coherent, contextually relevant sentences, making it suitable for tasks like conversations, answering questions, or generating content. However, while it aims to provide accurate and relevant information, it doesn't guarantee the correctness of its outputs. It's, uh, it's one of the prominent models in the realm of conversational AI due to its advanced natural language processing capabilities. So it's very good at writing, but its word shouldn't be taken as gospel um, as it comes out. In short, ChatGPT is more than a chatbot. It's an innovative tool that's helping reshape education, making learning more accessible, enhancing research, not replacing, and we'll come back to that and helping to ensure that no student feels left behind. So I've looked specifically at ChatGPT, but on the market, there are a whole lot of other AI options out there. There's some that focus on video, um, some that focus on images, text, research, design, presentation, audio. There's a lot of cool ones out there. Some that I've tinkered with uh, outside of ChatGPT are MidJourney uh, for images and Slides AI for slide creation. They've been interesting, but my primary focus has been on ChatGPT, but feel free to check these others out. So, value proposition. Benefits for educators. Some of the benefits include efficient content creation. Professors can use generative AI to create educational content, as such as lecture notes, presentations, and even video lectures, saving valuable time and effort. I've used this um, in my class, as well as in helping design a couple other classes, it's really streamlined some of the admin processes and it's been rather helpful. Personalized learning, AI can be tailored, can tailor learning material to meet individual needs and learning styles of students, thereby enhancing the learning experience. Playing around with this, I've used it to create some narrative examples that I've read to students in class, some uh, hypothetical scenarios that students have played out in class, and these were all based off my original lecture notes on the material. So I had 
my starting material and was able to branch off very quickly to address those different learner types, whether they're audible, visual, or kinesthetic learners. Enhancing research. AI can assist professors in their research activities such as data analysis, literature review, and even hypothesis generation. Once again, there's a word of caution with this one, but we'll touch on that here in a moment. Collaboration idea generation. AI tools can facilitate collaboration among professors and help generate new ideas for teaching methods, research projects, or academic writing. And I've had the benefit of being able to do this in a class design that I'm working with one of our tenure faculty members, as well as a member of a third party company that we've come together and are working on a project to design a new program. Next one is student engagement. AI generated content such as interactive quizzes and simulations can be used to enhance student engagement and participation in class. Once again, um, similar to the personalized learning, you can really shape existing material into new avenues to meet students where they're at and encourage that engagement. Um, I've had a good deal of success this term making lectures a little more interesting for my students and had received positive feedback on some of the methods applied. And then lastly, enhanced creativity. AI can help professors in developing creative and innovative teaching materials, methods, thereby enriching overall educational experience for students. So a lot of these, you can kind of see that common trend of taking one idea and then expanding it or exploring it in different angles. Benefits for students. So outside of writing papers and some of the other uh, articles we've seen um, reporting how students are using it or how faculty may be concerned that AI is being used, there are some personal or uh, some positive angles that it can be applied in. Personalized learning again, AI can take information and rephrase it for a student. So speaking over with my students in class as well as running a simulation in class with them, we took one prompt and had ChatGPT explain it to us several different ways. So it was nice if you get notes from a lecture or explained some material in a lecture, you can take that and then run it through ChatGPT and ask it to explain it in a different way, um, in a different tone to help facilitate that understanding. Writing support. AI-powered tools can improve writing skills by providing suggestions for grammar, punctuation, and style, and in detecting plagiarism. The Office 365 suite, if I'm not mistaken, their editor is using AI content now to review. And that's been particularly helpful for concision, grammar checking. It's a really nice tool to kind of spruce up writing without actually replacing the writing process. Study aids and resources. AI can generate study guides, flashcards, and practice quizzes tailored to course content, facilitating efficient and effective study sessions. Again, in my class, I had some students provide me um, topics for upcoming tests. We type the prompts into AI, the uh, chat GPT and ask them to quiz us on the different topics. It'll fire off questions. You'll type in your answer. It'll tell you whether it's right or wrong and provide an explanation. So if you're not one that likes to sit there and flip through cards, this is a more dynamic and interactive way to go through that review material. Time management. This was a big one that worked really well for my students. Of I gave them scenarios where they had to meet certain objectives for the week. They had certain deadlines that couldn't be moved, but they also had items they had to complete. So for example, they had three tests, two papers, one social event, one uh, club event, as well as exercising and calling their mother for their birthday. They were able to type in to ChatGPT, please give me a schedule, entered all the criteria, and ChatGPT provided different approaches to meet all of those objectives within the set time parameters, which is really nice, especially as students are learning to manage their time entering the university for the first time. It's been rather helpful and uh, provide, received good feedback from my students. Lastly, enhanced creativity. AI can provide, uh, can help support creative writing projects by offering inspiration, generating ideas, or even creating artwork, music, and other creative outputs. So it can kind of give that spark from which a student may build their papers from. One faculty member on our AI kind of research team that's been taking a look at ChatGPT since it kind of came onto the scene has actually encouraged uh, their students to use ChatGPT as a jumping off point. So they'll enter a prompt and get started in ChatGPT, take what ChatGPT puts out, and build on it from there. So it's kind of kickstarts that writing process.
And then our last column, benefits for LNSA admins. Some automated content creation, which I found helpful and we'll kind of showcase here in a minute. Data analysis and reporting. This is kind of cool in the beta right now of ChatGPT4. Um, there's, it has a option that you can enable that allows ChatGPT to know how to write and execute Python code and it can work with file uploads. So you can ask for help with data analysis, image conversions, or editing a code file. It's still in beta, so there are some bugs to work out, and I don't do a lot of data analysis myself, so I can't speak in too much detail to it, but it is out there. And then streamlined workflow, um, it can automate certain tasks. Um, announcements have been a good application that I've used it for. So as I mentioned research earlier of a, uh, ChatGPT and AI being a supplement to, not a replacement of research. So there's a phenomenon known as AI hallucinations. AI hallucination is a phenomenon wherein a large language model, LLM, often generative AI, chatbots, or computer vision tool, perceives a pattern or objects that are non-existent or imperceptible to human observers, creating outputs that are nonsensical or are altogether inaccurate. So a example of this, when ChatGPT was being tried out by everybody, everyone was popping in there and you know typing in different things, a instructor I know pretty well was talking to me about it. He said, oh, it works pretty good. I gave it some prompts for papers and they were okay. And then I asked it to write a biography on me. And overall, the biography was pretty good. It had you know, previous employment information, some publications, but it also mentioned that he had earned a degree from a college he has never attended nor had a relationship with. So totally false. There's no ties to this institution at all, but it was right there in the biography. So AI can help with research, but word of caution, it should be used very carefully and double checked um, before using it for any kind of research, um, paper, documentation, anything like that. In addition to the hallucinations, we can sometimes uh, see issues with the ChatGPT being out of date. For example, um, I asked ChatGPT a question the other day, and it mentioned it couldn't answer it as its database hasn't been updated since January 2022. So trying to quiz it on current events or the leading edge of certain items may not be that all that accurate from time to time. So another word of caution towards this, this useful tool. Administrative tasks are where ChatGPT, in my experience, has really excelled. In my role as an instructor and as an LMS ad admin, I found ChatGPT can save me a lot of time in setting up office hours, um, drafting schedules, drafting uh, responses and messages, and kind of streamlining communications to both be clear, uh, but also meet all the objectives I need it to. And without further ado, enough of my talking, let's take a look at ChatGPT itself. So prior to this meeting, I was testing out another new feature in ChatGPT where you can create a custom GPT. So it'll ask you a few prompts. It'll kind of target in where or what focus you'd like the GPT to focus on. So I set up a Sakai LMS GPT. So it's going to focus on step-by-step -step instructions for an, a Sakai LMS guide at the University of Dayton. So let's, let's ask it, what are the steps to submit an assignment on Sakai? And we'll see how accurate it is. And as you read through it in chat, give me a thumbs up, thumbs down, yes, no if you think this is a good description of the process or kind of where, where, what you think on it. And I'll kind of scroll up a little bit once it's done typing it out. So it's got our login steps, our direction of the course, finding the assessment tools, you know, select the assessment, review the assignment instructions, 
upload your assignment, check out the different options, correct file, submit button, verify submit, troubleshooting, seeing some thumbs up, some pretty goods. So it, it does very good. <laughs> Martin says it's a little bit dull. I did ask it to be very kind of straight to the point. So you can you can ask it to jazz it up a little bit and be a little more engaging. But for this one, I set it up to be kind of a, a pretty standard chat bot. So this is another application of the GPT is you can use it to kind of target information. Um, and I'd like to see how it plugs in further. Currently, I've just been able to get it to work in the Chappy GPT system itself. Not complete, at least for 22. Yeah, it was most of the way there. So, and that's kind of the information we've seen working with it of it's a solid C student overall. It will do most things pretty well. Like it's fine, it'll do the job. So looking at it, further, there's a couple of demonstrations I want to show within Sakai. So before the conference, I made this new site. And this new site is going to be a you know new course that I'm going to build from the ground up. So this course is going to be covering pottery. So I'm assuming that I'm an instructor and I have, I'm a subject matter expert in pottery. But I'm a little crunched for time. I kind of put off my date. I've got to have this course up as soon as possible. So let's get started. So I'm going to ask, please give me an overview for a, of a college class covering potter, pottery in one to two paragraphs. So I'm going to review this, and this is going to serve as part of my overview. Okay, so it did a very general one. But let's see if we can dial in a little better. That's already reading much better. Okay, so I'm going to review it now as the instructor. I'm going to make any changes that either don't mesh up to what I'm going to be leading um, or just wrong and just kind of review it for accuracy. But I'm going to take this and I'm going to save it for another step. So next, I'm going to set up my office hours for the term. So I'm going to say, please give me a schedule of office hours with 15 minute meeting times between 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. and 4 p.m. Tuesdays and Thursdays beginning January 1st, 2024 until June 1st, 2024. And let's give it another shot. And this can be something we run into from time to time. There's a lot of demand on the servers as well as the uh, complexity of the task. It can time out. So once again, it's not perfect, but it is a nice tool. We'll see if this will go through. If not, I will move right along.
Yes, I have a section on data privacy rule of thumb kind of to use a little after this. So I will touch on that once we finish up the demo, but that is a good point to acknowledge. There we go. So That's better. I'll take this and throw it down here. Okay, so now I've got a pretty good set of overview information put together. And another thing I could do is provide code for us. So I'm going to ask it to give me some HTML code for. Um, some some of the information we generated. So I want HTML code with a bolded blue text title, italicized green overview, um, red text with strike through for class meeting times, and normal text for our office hours. So it's going to run through and generate some code for me. And I'll plan to throw it in here and we'll see what we've got. Just to keep an eye on time, I'm going to jump back into this presentation while it's generating that code. So to cover kind of rules, or not necessarily rules, but best practices for student privacy, we will take a look at this. OK. So the demonstration shows there can be some interesting and potentially helpful items ChatGPT can do. However, it's crucial to consider not only the benefits, but potential challenges such as student privacy. Student privacy in the digital age is kind of a multifaceted concern. Um, with LLMs, there's a risk of inadvertently exposing sensitive student data. These models uh, require access to vast amounts of data, including confident, potentially confidential student information to work well. Ensuring that these systems are secure against breaches and misuse is kind of step one. So that'll be handled on the IT side. They'll make sure the firewalls in place, different protocols are in place to make sure those are squared away. But we must ask ourselves, how can we use these tools while still safeguarding students? One way uh, is how I've applied ChatGPT today, doing relatively general benign information of most of the work I'm doing doesn't refer to names, doesn't refer to places. Um, it's very general of at a university, not at the University of Dayton, um, if it's going to be external facing. I did set up that GPT bot for UD, but that was with the intent of it being internally facing. Um, now, typing in student information of John Doe has an A, Jane Doe has a B, so on and so forth, keeping that pretty well filtered. Um, another method is carefully reviewing use cases with uh, how you're planning to use it, look at it intentionally of how it's going to be applied, but also reviewing that with the students of if the students are going to use it or have personal accounts, or you're going to encourage that in your class, make sure that students are being cyber mindful and have best security practices in mind of not sharing sensitive information, not asking it for password prompts, or any kind of information that can compromise that personally identifiable information. So data breaches are a risk. Machine learning being trained on individuals' information is a risk. Academic integrity can be a risk as well. So if students' information is published, then the AI is able to troll that system. They can pull in different information. So it it's, falls back on the best IT practices, can be applied to uh, OpenAI, as well as your standard kind of web browsing computer navigation. Mitigation, general use rather than specific, and just education, understanding the tool, when to use it, and how to use it.
The next one, uh, ethical implications of LLM in academia are profound. These models, while robust, are not infallible, as shown by that hallucination phenomena um, and that narrative that I went to earlier. Take a look at our code. Okay, so that is done. But in addition, uh, the AIs are vulnerable to biases, inaccuracies, and misinformation. They can inadvertently perpetuate biases or inaccuracies in an educational in set, uh, setting where truth and clarity are very important. This can pose a significant challenge. Uh, there's also the concern of academic integrity, which I mentioned. Um, the ease at which students can generate relatively sophisticated content using LLMs raised question about originality and effort. And we actually had a development series of, is the written paper dead? So the, the question then comes down to how well do you know your students and then more creatively writing prompts? So you, we have to encourage critical thinking of making a prompt complicated enough that you can't simply type in, write me a paper on A, write me a paper on B, so-and-so. Requires some problem solving, use specific readings from the class, it makes it a little harder. Um, and then just actually reviewing the papers. We've seen from time to time that in cases of potential academic misconduct, a student can submit a paper, but they don't read it fully. And if you go into the sources and check out the sources, sometimes they don't exist or they point to information that really has nothing to do with what the paper is on. So there's ways to come around those particular challenges. But again, it falls back on education and an understanding of how it's being applied, of not hiding from the AI, but also, you know, setting boundaries for how it's being used. But quickly, let's go back to our code here. We're going to copy our code. And look at that. So now relatively quickly, I put together a formatted HTML page. I won't call this work of art. But it's shown some of the cases of it can change colors, it can change formatting options. Um, it'll give you that code that'll be functional and can give you a base to kind of jump off from. And I think I'm getting closer to time, so I want to open it up for questions on anything I've gone over so far, or anything you'd like me to uh, run ChatGPT through. All right, Jordan, how are faculty currently using it currently? Um, we've seen a few different ways of using it for kind of writing workshops and seminars, um, using it as kind of a step off point for other projects of using it to brainstorm and bounce ideas off of. In my class where I'm trying to teach best study skills, I've used it to help set up schedules. I've used it to kind of use review methods, just trying to imply it intentionally where you can see a need for a back and forth kind of dialogue. What are your concerns if LM providing any information that was? What is the issue concern of LM providing you information that was essentially scrapped and looked from? Miles, that is a Good question. I know that's up for debate in a lot of the legislation that's going around currently. Once again, reviewing any material that's being brought in and ensuring that it's not being presented as original, citing it generally as a source or denoting that it's been adapted from LLM is a good step for now. As more legislation comes out, I think that'll provide some clarity because everyone's kind of working in this nebulous area as it's further expanded. How did you connect ChatGPT to the student information? Um, we have not integrated ChatGPT kind of with any of our information. This is a hypothetical. You can um, add it to CK Editor and a few other um, plugins. We've opted to kind of keep it isolated from now and use it in conjunction to Sakai rather than integrate it with Sakai. Uh, question was grabbing. 
conversation. Once again, um, Nancy's question as well. It's uh, still a nebulous area from my understanding with more legislation kind of being developed currently. Creating guided reading questions. Okay, so So here's one prompt that we could do guided reading questions. Oh, okay, that's one way that you've used ChatGPT. And that's kind of a good example of you can type in and get some ideas and then adapt this question to be more particular. So I use the Hobbit as an example. So it's going to say it provides us character analysis, setting world building, themes and morals, symbolism and uh, imagery, as well as conflicts and resolution. It'll give you some short and to the point. Uh, reviewing it quickly, it looks like it had a pretty good job, asked some pretty decent questions. If you didn't connect ChatGPT to Sky, I just didn't know how to use Sakai. So because Sky is open source, uh, it has it, it can read anything that's on the open faced internet. So it can go to like an external facing support uh, channel, um, open uh, comments pages, etc. So it can actually look at any Sakai information available on the internet and pull that information in and review it. So it actually didn't need to be connected to our instance of Sakai to know how to write that guide. Um, test questions is a good one. Multiple choice. Uh, I've done a, done a couple essays. It's, it's a, for me personally, been a good starting point. But like I said, they were kind of, in my opinion, like C-level questions. So they did provide a good jumping off point for me to build a little more robust questions. That's a cool question. It's hard to say. Jordan brings up a good point. The Turnitin similarity is very interesting as well. Um, Turnitin has a hard time detecting AI. It's interesting though that it only detected 35%. Um, that's a lot of a lot of good testing. Always need edit. Yeah, agreed, Bonnie. They always need editing. Oh, the professor is interested in using students to learn these abilities. I think there are good cases for that. Um, one option that I, I kind of touched on is having it explain material in different ways. So if a student doesn't necessarily understand the lecture in one format, it can be explained multiple ways. Um, that'd be a good question for me to raise with our um, Office of Learning Resources as well. I'm, that's something I haven't touched on, but I would imagine there's use cases um, with that kind of application and review it can help with the accessibility as well of reviewing code or information so in conjunction with the accessibility checker that uh, we were presented earlier it can it can help out students my pleasure Okay, any other questions for Will? Oh, they already posed all the tough ones, so. <laughs> um, well, thank you so much. This was a very interesting presentation. It's neat to see the examples of the, you know, the HTML code and some of those things that can really be time savers. Um, or an instructor setting up a course for the first time. So those are all some great examples and hopefully people can uh, can take some of that off to their own tasks and, and use it to save some time when they're building stuff for next semester. So 
Thank you so much. Really appreciate it.